the greatest pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. Walter Bagehot. I have always detested the word can't. It's a bully, a coward. It's restrictive. Limiting essence does not fit in my version of freedom. How does it make you feel when you're told you can't? Participate, join in, act, speak, go somewhere, achieve your dream, succeed. I would love to hear in the comments section of the blog what your feelings are when you hear that. Let me tell you about one of my early run-ins with Kant. I grew up poor, not just a little bit poor, but what is referred to as dirt poor. My family was very large with six brothers and six sisters. We didn't have anything extra and just barely the basics to survive. One day, a classmate invited me to her pool party for her birthday. Well, she invited the whole class and I was in the class. Therefore, she invited me, just saying. I was so excited and I couldn't wait to see her pool and to join in the fun. And then, the dreaded words from my mom, you can't go. It was one of many devastating moments of my youth that involved that horrid word. And I felt like my joy balloon had just been deflated with a pin. Can't seem to devour me at every turn. And every time I heard the word, Something inside of me boiled a little hotter. A shift in perspective occurred for me with my friend, Mr. T, who I introduced you to a few days ago. Mr. T was a very large man, and I love to say he was bigger than life because that was how he appeared to so many who loved him immensely. We were making plans to go for lunch one day, and he said, in a heavy New York accent, I don't do boots. Well, I thought, what the heck does that have to do with having lunch? Asking for clarification, he just repeated it again. I don't do boots. And then I got it, and for you fellow, non-New Yorkers, I will interpret. He didn't do booths. They were too restrictive and he couldn't fit in. Now, to me, this was interesting in the fact that he didn't say he can't do them, but chose to word it as, I don't. I made a mental note of the difference. He wasn't bullying himself, beating himself up with something he couldn't do. Instead, he was acknowledging that there were other options and Boots was not one of them. Hmm. Note to self, this is an important strategic maneuver. I learned so much from this gentle giant. He tried to teach this country girl how to speak like a New Yorker, but never succeeded. Maybe in the next life, Mr. T. To say that it frustrates me to hear someone use can't as an excuse for not doing something is an understatement. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. I just want to scream, yes, you can. Wake up and see how you are shackling yourself. I didn't wake up to this until much later in life. It wasn't until I discovered my self-worth that I took a long, hard look at how much I hid behind Kent. I gave my power away to it, 
and I let it sucker punch me constantly, it would go something like, I want to say yes, but, oh, I forgot. I can't do that. One day, when I was still caught in the illusion of can'tness, and yeah, that's my word, the angel spoke very clearly to me. It's a message that stops me in my tracks when can't starts to come out of my mouth. They said, what you are really saying is you choose not to. Wow, wow, wow. Angels. How can we remember our magnificence, especially at times when we feel so vulnerable and unsure of ourselves? Dear ones, this is one of the hardest lessons you will encounter in your human experience because the human body is the epitome of restriction. You start out unable to walk, talk, feed yourself, cleanse yourself, and you are totally dependent on others for every need. However, once you start realizing the things you can do, you leave that dependence behind you, do you not? In a good experience, Your caretaker praises you for your accomplishments and your forward growth. You learn your power in what you can do. Throughout life, you build on those small steps and take pride in what you can accomplish, leaving behind the more restrictive can't. Many times, however, in your experiences, you run up against can't. And if you are not grounded enough in your self-worth, you may once again hand your power over to it. We encourage you to stand firm in your divine self. And when you encounter the can'tness, examine your options. Maybe it's not something that is truly that important to you, and therefore you can make a different choice. Remember that how you perceive it is important, as was pointed out prior in your story of your friend. His wording was perfect, as he said, I don't, instead of, I can't. There are always options, dear ones. Stop waving your flag in defeat before you even examine them. Thank you, angels. Once again, for confirmation and clarity, yes, I can is my favorite power sentence. Thank you. I love you. Namaste, y'all. I would like to dedicate this angel message to my angel, Mr. T, Anthony Tinrero, 1962. To 2010. Thanks, buddy. I'll see you later.